Welcome everybody. Don't throw tomatoes at me at the, uh, yet. Say it for to, uh, to the end. It's a pretty provocative title. Let me state that when I am using the word Linux in the presentation, I mostly th talk about the kernel and not about specific distributions, also called as Linux, and very uh, imprecisely. So we have this great Linux kernel, which is not in itself inherently insecure. Lots of security features have been added to the kernel, like ASLR and null pointer dereferencing, uh, protection against null pointer dereferencing. If you don't know what it, these expressions mean, mean does is not a problem. I'll explain them. How many of you have you seen Andras Kabai's presentation in the other room? Very good. Then I'll explain it. And obviously, there are additional uh, security tools. Uh, that are not parts of the kernel. These additional tools are GS security and SC Linux. Uh, it is, the kernel is not inherently secure because uh, the maintainers of the main and kernel is not necessarily uh, the, uh, the way they sh it should be. For instance, as, as Linus uh, Torvald said security people are leeches, showing how, in how high esteem he holds security people. And, uh, enterprise type functionality is also uh, used on Linux bases, Linux uh, platforms where turning on security settings may cause applications to not run properly. And obviously, as we know, all business people consider uh, this the first. How many know what ch root is? How many of you know that this is a security tool? So. So the hacker need so, so, so there are people there are applications that need to be run as root for whatever reason. Another problem is that when an attacker can inject code uh, into our system, then that code will run as root, and in Unix in the Unix world can access anything. One. Unix world implementation that looks back uh, on a history of 40 years is ch root, which is obviously which narrows down the accessible file system area, so a program does not see out of a library through the VHF uh, system. The target goal of this was to uh, make development easier because this provides a virtualized environment. Well, it's not virtually virtualized, but the scripts will consider it as virtualized. This Wikipedia quote says that chroot is not necessarily enough to contain a process with root privileges. Uh, escaping from chroot. Uh, there are many techniques to escape uh, from a ch root jail. It's, there, are, there's ex there are extremely simple ways to break out of ch root jail. We have a ch root with our application running in it. The attacker takes control. He sees that it's a ch root. Then he creates a uh, subdirectory. Why sh shouldn't he be able to see? H roots into it. The pointer pointing to the current working directory will point outwards out of the uh, ch root.
but if we see a shrewd into an internal library, but the current working directory pointer still points out outside, and we start uh, stepping dot 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 always to the parent directory, we will be able to get out of the ch root jail. Because since this is so by design, the only patch I have ever heard solving this issue Uh, there's only one such uh, tool. Another, th we we could also limit a uh, a attacker, for instance, limiting MK nod. MK nod can be used to create a raw disk device, and then for. For it, and doing this, you can, for instance, create a raw disk device pointing to the primary disk, and you can read or write it from that point onwards. Or you can also directly write, read or write kernel memory. And you can also uh, connect, use speed trace to connect to a process living outside the jail, and you can make that process do anything you want. The most important thing is that almost all jailbreaking the guys root privileges. So protection against it is the following. You should not have root within CH root. This is what Anna Cox said. The problem is that C the, one of the t targets of CH root is to run an application that requires root privileges. But we have a beautiful tool called GR Security that restricts double CH routing, disabling you to CH root within CH root. It's totally unclear why this has been implemented at all earlier on. It does not uh, 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 allow MK nod, no P trace outside CH root, etc. So this immediately closes all currently known methods, closes out currently known methods for uh, uh, exiting CH root. Just securities, CH root hardening uh, measures can be read about on, at this link. CH root itself is not a security tool, as Alan Cox notes. On the other hand, the problem is that it is still being used as such. For instance, in the case of MySQL, Apache, FTP demons uh, ha have a description uh, about how to CH root it. You have then to copy everything into the CH root because you will never be able to get out of it again. But, this, but the system manager will possibly believe that the system is secure while it is not. The next thing that uh, you can use to protect against uh, buffer overflow attacks is Eric Split. It tries to correct the prob the issue of the Norman architecture, the problem being that there is no distinction between data and uh, code. We, used, we, we had an article about this, about how you can use Stack Overflow uh, to take control of badly written native applications. Memory pages should either be runnable or writable, but never both of it, both of these at the same time. Implementing this means some overhead, and has, for this reason, not really been implemented widely. The, the NX bit allows you to mark pages that you should not that should not be run. Linux supports the NX bit since 2004, so certain areas to which uh, this is segregates actually NX bit segregates the areas of memory for use by other storage or process instructions. The target is the goal is to make the system more secure or to run Java, Wine, or some other applications that does want exactly this, write a memory area and then run it. The problem with an exhibit is that it does not, it's not a panacea. 
the return to LIPC attack is uh, widespreadly used against it. I love Wikipedia because uh, it sums up the gist of something in the few one or two sentences. So what this does is, <coughs> in a traditional buffer overflow, we write the stack with a lot of data and override the pointer pointing to, uh, the, uh, to the next instruction, which points into the stack. And this immediately uh, executes our code, pushed on the stack. If uh, the next bit is set uh, to the memory pages that contain the stack, that this so it uh, the next bit will eliminate this attack. But libc contains uh, functions that are called by the native programmer from the outside. And these are identified as native. So if you select a libc that you know must be there and the parameters are already on the stack, then all you need to do is jump control to that point and it control will be passed to an area that will be inherently identified as runnable or executable. Uh, this protection can be enhanced with stack smashing protection that makes sure that the stack cannot be uh, damaged and it stops program execution before anything could anyone could be able to overwrite the stack ASLR according to Wikipedia is a computer science security technology which involves randomly arranging the positions of key data areas like heap and stack, which would make return to libc impossible because libraries are located dynamically. So the only static thing is the code present in the program itself. In Linux, there is support for this since 2005, but the problem is that its entropy is a lot less than it should be. So it's often not really sufficient. But PAX, the PAX module, supports this functionality since 2001. And they were the first to use ASLR as an expression. And we, there, there's also an, an exec shield patch, which is more enterprise-like, which also makes some randomization. But before all of these, uh, it was easy to make, write exploits to programs and data loaded to the same spaces. The entropy is very small, very little. It's 8 to 13 bits, which me, we're talking about 256 bi uh, possibilities, which a CPU, a current CPU, can crunch in no time. Fork maintains randomization. We are beginning to step over into mathematics, uh, uh, skip into how to find the segment we want to jump into. We can also create knob slides. Knob is hex 90 in, on an x86 architecture, and the CPU will just uh, continue through it to the next instruction. So if we create a long area existing of purely knobs. So wherever program control is pushed, or wherever, wherever the program control jumps within this area, it will find a knob and then continue the a slide. And the second method is heap spraying. We put a lot of shrek into the heaps, and even if randomization is good enough, we might manage to jump to some part of the shell code. <coughs> In the beginning, I said that we randomized heap and stack. I uh, omitted libraries because <coughs> it's not trivial which libraries to, to randomize when. Microsoft also was very careful about randomization because it may cause random, uh, compatibility problems. As in the case of linuxgate.so, which was a shared object file, it used to have a static address despite the fact that all other structures of the program were randomized. And from this point onwards, if there was some usable instruction in the SO 
and there were a good many, for instance, uh, a jump instruction that uh, jumps to the stack. From that point on, if the attacker could inject data on the stack, data that is runnable, but doesn't know where it is, he just uh, jumps to the Linux gate SO's uh, instruction, such instruction, this jump instruction, and uh, Linux gate SO is told where the stack is, totally annihilating any beneficial effects of total randomization. Linux kernel also has had uh, or used to have something about null pointer deep referencing. OWASP gave me the best pre de uh, definition, which you may know if you're programming in C or Pascal. One of the first things when you are taught how to handle pointers is to not read uninitialized pointers. However, many pointers are initialized to zero because otherwise some leftover may be there. And this null means that the pointer does not point to anywhere. Al Gore's designer said that he, hold, he thinks his life's biggest mistake was to implement null pointers in Argol. <coughs> CWE writes that in very rare circumstances and environments, code execution is possible. And the problem is that these very rare circumstances occurred around the Linux kernel because the kernel is, uses common memory area with the process actually being run although the process cannot reach that data because it would be a bit more uh, a bit expensive to re remap kernel memory areas for each context switch but page 0 can be addressed by the application and you can map the t this area into the address space and Linux kernel uses Uh, function pointers. <coughs> Any OO programmer <coughs> will tell you that you can pass a, co a parameter that has a method. Well, Linux has not been written in object-oriented language, so a lot of things has been implement have been implemented with function pointers. So if the attacker maps a pointer to a runnable code into this area and then makes the kernel run this, because the programmer has not checked has not checked whether the pointer was an R pointer, then interesting things may result. In reaction to this, Linux 6, uh, 2.6.23 uh, had a fix called mmap min add, which can also be changed during runtime. One, there's one problem that there is a workaround for it. Tavis or or Mandy found a nasty bug that affects all Linux kernels. which allowed people on any Linux system to get root uh, privileges. PAX, which is packed with GR security, protects against attack like this with current exec on x86 architectures. But on a plain vanilla Linux learned by most people, uh, uh, do not protect with the pre with the earlier uh, workaround. Davis or Mandy found a nice bug in August of 2009 that affects all Linux kernels, a lot of them, and is exploitable using null pointer dereferencing. I think this was one of the reasons uh, Linus or uh, Torvalds got a brownie. This issue was resolved in kernel 2.6.32. The option allows us to tell, to specify the minimal address that can be mapped with the nmap function. And if it is set to any, 
to any value other than null will protect already against star point ID referencing. The question is uh, how many distributions uh, have not implemented this feature. This is a settable value, so the distribution sets it to what it wants to. And if you do not know that there are such kernel parameters or do not know how insecure some of these can be, you won't bother. GR security that I have mentioned so many times is a patch, a set of patches, kernel patches that makes the kernel more secure. Uh, let's restart. So GR security is a set of patches where that uh, would like to achieve is intended to achieve security, specifically in remote access applications. For instance, on systems that only have an embedded lin uh, Linux and a touch screen, uh, or other, or in situations where users have shell access, so on systems like this. Uh, just security uh, has a security. So the PAX package is also bundled with it, which uh, marks memory pages, as I mentioned with them. The, uh, the, uh, when I talked about the NX bit, uh, it flex but data memory is non-executable and program memory non-writable. Uh, RBAC, CH root, and other tools close doors or, or, or vulnerabilities that uh, should not be used by design by any applications. It, RBAC is role-based access control, which allows you to set these uh, access privileges, which may come in handy in case in some cases. For instance, Linux being root means a lot of capabilities. RBAC may uh, can be used to restrict these capabilities and give some programs only the capabilities they really need to, be, to run. And finally, it also solves a lot of problems. This solves a lot of problems, but there is one issue here, the default configuration. JSEC will not necessarily make your computers, your system uh, more secure, while at the same time, maybe it will cause problems. It has a nice configuration area uh, interface, but it is very hard to configure properly, uh, ending up with a system that is nimble enough, but also hardened enough. There are some proprietary applications that are examples of this when th that make life m more difficult and they are not even secure enough. There are uh, competing technologies, uh, one of them being SE Linux. It is also vulnerable in many cases. Pass audio, for instance, is a point in case, a uh, case in point. They point, wanted to demonstrate zero reference, uh, zero point of the referencing. SUEIDPA, this is Suite Pulse Audio. Uh, the system could be broken not because they hacked into the kernel, but a kernel uh, bug also allowed them to run Pulse Audio, which will then be run as root every time because Suite is set on it, plus the kernel uh, bug caused the system to be broken into. Uh, page zero was 
allowed for some programs, and Pass Audio was one of them. And so, despite the fact that S Linux was uh, installed, uh, it could still be uh, owned because uh, Pass Audio was allowed page zero, point, pointing to page zero. Another technology is OpenVZ. Some call it virtualization. I'm not sure whether this is correct, but I, who am I to, meddle, to, to, to discuss? To say it is not. How many of you know OpenVZ? Uh, <laughs> well, a few know about it. In OpenVZ, virtualization runs on a, on a shared kernel. We have a kernel. We put a lot of users uh, on it, and all of them can feel like they had a separate computer of their own, despite running the fact that he's running on a, on a shared kernel with other users. This doesn't protect against kernel bugs, because if there are bugs in the kernel, then all of the systems become insecure. So a para virtualization would be a lot more sensible. All that's I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your attention.